This video is going to give you an introduction into Exure. So from this video you'll get a basic understanding on the purpose and the capabilities of Exure. I will also talk about uh, how to handle certain situations and give you tips on your workflow. This video is probably not for Exure pros. So what is Exure good for? Low to mid fidelity prototyping. What I mean by that is that you cannot make it feel perfect like a finished application feels. You can really go into all of the details, but you cannot make graphics with it. You cannot make animations with a high fidelity degree with it. You cannot really dig into the code. So that's why it's used as a low to mid fidelity prototype, at least that's what I do. Um, you can certainly tweak it here and there and you can go quite far with it, but um, it doesn't beat a handcrafted application. So that's probably the most obvious use case. It's called extra rapid prototyping. So creating wireframes is one of the top tasks you can uh, accomplish using Exure and plus making them interactive. So as I already mentioned, it's also possible to dive into the animations and interactions of your prototype and you can get a quite a good feel for how it might uh, feel like in the end, the final product. You have quite a big portfolio of interactions and animations and since version 8 even more possibilities and options of connecting those so you can really create complex animations now and get also quite complex at the interactions which is great of course everything depends on you and what you want to do with it i created everything from wireframes to animated layouts and made them an interactive click dummy in the end. This is where it beats tools like Envision because you can go much deeper when it goes to the interaction design and defining how those animations might look like and how everything behaves. It's quite obvious. It's not Photoshop, it's not Sketch, it's a prototyping tool, you cannot do screen design with it. It goes so far that you can place graphics, but it's not really good at exporting images, it's not really good at making them look good in the browser, so you can use finished graphics from a screen design app, but don't use it for screen design. Also, image processing is not possible or only very limited. I think you can only turn images black and white and crop them, so that's it, basically. You cannot do responsive design in Exure. You can do adaptive design, so you define certain breaking points and the different states the layout has, but it's not fluid in any way. The code exported or generated by Exure is not very usable. You cannot do anything with it once it's uh, generated. You cannot modify it. It's also not very good at performing, so it's unfortunately not like in Webflow. Creating interactive prototypes can be done very quickly and efficiently using Exure. It's easy to generate specifications as it's a native, natively built-in tool, so you can also style them and define what parts of your prototype flow into that uh, generated specifications. Working collaboratively works fine. 
you can use XShare, you can use a team file, you can get um, comments by your clients and you can really work as a team on one file using a SVN similar technology. So I think it's easier to understand everything when you see it in the actual program. So I just quickly open up Xure and uh, show you a little bit more and get a bit in depth. So this is the empty Xure canvas. Um, this is Xure 8 and uh, you should see the same thing when you open up your application. Um, for this example, I'm just going to uh, drag and drop some objects on the on the canvas, just um, give you some kind of impression of what you can do with the tool. So at first I want to talk about the objects. Uh, the objects are grouped in a widget library. You can also create your own libraries and everyone has this default library. So we'll just drag and drop this ellipse uh, onto our canvas and name it in this example circle. Then we can also change uh, the styling. So we are going to remove the border and add a light gray shade to it. Um, then we want to add uh, some text, for example, this heading one. Also, just writing circle, placing it right in the center. You see, you get also those guides here, which are quite helpful. And then we are going to group both objects and have this larger object, and we call it circle group. All right. So um, you can also create masters in Xure. For that, you also just have to right click it and select convert to master. Give it a name, for example, circle master. We're getting really creative here. And uh, this master can be dragged and dropped to any page you're creating here. It will always look like in that stage when you made it a master. So I can delete it place it there again. If I want to make changes to them, I can either edit the master itself or I have to break it away and it becomes um, the group of objects it was before. So the next thing I want to do is convert it into a dynamic panel. And those dynamic panels are really, really helpful if you're going into interactions because you can define different states for one object. And we just created uh, this one group of objects and I can convert it into a dynamic panel, give it a name again, like DP circle, DP is for dynamic panel. And then if I double click on that dynamic panel, I see a list of all the states and currently it has only state one, so one state, which is what you can see right here. What I want to do is duplicate this state because then I can easily edit it and do not have to create something new and just start from uh, where I was before, if that makes any sense. Um, in this example, I'm going to change the color in state two, just make it bright red and we change the color of the text to white. Okay, and I can now close this panel state and back on the page where we put our dynamic panel, we all, we again see state number two because it is in this list on first position. If I move state two on top and click OK, we see state two. And if I move state two back, we see state one. Easy as that. Now to make it interactive, I'm going to place a button next to our dynamic panel and I'm not going to use some of those style buttons, but a bit lower in the form section, we have the native HTML button. And I will just place it here and uh, give it a label, click me. And now we can add some interactivity to it. So for that, I just have to select the, the object I want to make 
interactive. This can also be an image, this can be everything basically, even a picture you drag and drop from out of the app onto your canvas. You can make almost everything interactive and then um, just select those this object and click on properties. There you have the interactions. Those are all events you can attach some animation or behavior to. So to add this interaction to this button, we have to select it and then look for the right interaction we want to use, the right event. In this case, we want to choose on click. So we go through the actions and look for set panel state because we want to set the state of this panel on click. So here it is. We select the panel that we just named DP circle and select state two, have no animation, just click OK and this will already work. If we click on preview, it opens up a browser with your prototype and you can start playing around, check if everything is working and it takes a bit of time to load. Now if we click here, this should become red and the font should become white. Ta-da! Great, this worked great. So um, we can now make it a bit more complex. For example, we can slide through all the panel states. This makes sense if there are more than just two states and you or you have a slideshow or, or some kind of stage with a slider or something like that. And you would just select next state and wrap from last to first. Now I just confirmed it. Again, click on preview, another tab with the updated uh, prototype and I just can now switch through all the states by clicking. Now, if you want to add some animation to it, you can again select your interaction and then select the case. And um, here you have options for adding or changing the animations. So for example, animate in can be a fade, animate out would be also a fade. You can select the duration, for example, 100 milliseconds, click on OK, click on preview, and now it should have the smooth fade transition. I hope that gave you an overview on Actuous Potential and maybe you just give it a try and check it out on your own. I think they have a free trial downloadable. I'm also planning on doing some more advanced videos on that topic. If you have any wishes or suggestions or questions, just leave a comment below. I'll check that out. Otherwise, a thumbs up or a subscription would be much appreciated. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.